Welcome back to the shop. In this first episode of a two-part series, we're going to be creating three custom steam radiator covers. If you grew up in an old home or if you own an old home, you're very familiar with steam radiators. They provide a great deal of heat in the wintertime and keep us warm. We had a customer reach out to us. They have steam radiators in their 1900s home and they were looking for a way to integrate the steam radiators into their home decor. Our first step was to go on site, take some detailed measurements, develop our plans, and then gather together all the material that we need. We're going to be building these out of poplar. In total, we're making three radiator covers. Using my plans, I grouped all the material into batches. So the first radiator cover, I'm getting all the rails and styles cut to their rough length. By cutting them to the rough length, I can then use what I call the gang cut method, where I assemble all the mating pieces, fasten, square them on one end, fasten them together with a clamp, and then using my miter box, get them to their finished cut so I ensure that they're all the same length. Once I have the pieces cut to their final length, I then bring them over to the joiner and joint them so they have a nice square edge that can run along the table saw fence. If you haven't already, now is a great time to subscribe to our channel. Fresh off the joiner, we can now run that straight edge right across the fence of the table saw and cut them to their final width. The styles are going to be two and a half inches and the rails three and a half inches. You'll notice as I get close to the blade, I'm using push blocks. One of the radiator covers is tall, it's 38 inches. And in the design process, we determined that it was best to have a cross piece in the center field of the radiator cover. So here at the table saw, we're gonna be creating that cross piece and cutting out the dado. And we'll have an overlapping dado that comes over the top of that to create that cross piece. With the dado's rough cut on the table saw, it's now time to do some handwork with a chisel, a block plane, and eventually some sandpaper to get this joint extremely tight. Before I made my cuts, I made sure that the cut on the table saw was on the inside of my pencil line so that any fine tuning could be done with the chisel so that I get a good tight fit when I do the cross lap uh, dado joint. As I go through, I get a one inch chisel, break down any of the excess left from the work that was done on the table saw, and then once this is fine tuned back, and I have nice square corners, I'll then move over to a rabbit plane. And what the rabbit plane is going to be allow me to do is further clean up that joint, get rid of some of the saw marks, and fine tune it even more gently. I'm using a number 92 rabbit plane, and just to get a little bit of antiquity, uh, this was actually my grandfather's and then my father's plane that I still very happily use in my shop. It does a great job of getting in tight on the angles, and has an extremely sharp blade. With the milling complete, we can now move on to the assembly phase of the process. These radiator covers are going to be assembled using pocket hole screws. What you see me doing here is using a pocket hole jig to screw two holes in each end of the styles for the ends and the face frames of each of the radiator covers. Once the holes are drilled, we'll then use inch and a quarter pocket hole screws to make the final assembly. For the assembly, I lay a half inch piece of MDF across my bench top to ensure I have a nice flat surface. Then using my framing square, check to ensure I have a perfect 90 degree angle. Clamp both pieces in place, and then using my screw gun, and inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, assemble the rail into the style. For the mating side of the frame, I follow the exact same process. I will check to make sure that the face side is down, align the ends, and then using my clamp, clamp them in place, and using the pocket hole screws, again, join the rail into the style. Mm -hmm. 
Assembly of the cross frame is going to be a little bit different. We're not using pocket hole screws for this. Instead, we're using traditional woodworking joinery, where if you remember, we used the table saw to cut uh, dados into the center of the cross pieces. And now what we're doing is applying glue. Off camera, I did a, a dry fit to ensure that the joint fit and then I had a good 90 degree angles across all four corners. And now we're applying type on two glue to both mating sides, ensuring we get good glue coverage on the bottoms as well as the edges. And then we'll slide the two pieces together. With assembly there, we then go back with the framing square to ensure we've got a good 90 degree angle across all four corners. And then we can begin the process of assembling the entire frame. We are going to be using pocket hole screws to attach the cross to the main frame of the radiator cover. And we're doing it the exact same way we did the others. We lay the MDF on the tabletop, ensure we have a nice flat surface, double check with the ruler to ensure that the cross pieces are in the center of the frame, clamp it down, and then using the inch and quarter dry, uh, pocket hole screws, we assemble the frame. We now move on to the mating side of the cross piece and we want to ensure that again that we've got the perfect match on the top and the bottom in terms of the measurements from the, either side of the cross. So we use the clamp just to move it over just a little bit to ensure that alignment. Then clamp it down and again insert our pocket hole screws. with all four pieces of the cross connected to the frame. Our last step is just to apply a clamp to ensure our glue connection is solid. We'll let that sit overnight and then we have final assembly of that tall cabinet. We've now assembled the three radiator covers. Our next step is to bring them on site to the customer's home, do a test fit to ensure they fit in the space, and then bring them back to the shop. Apply a coat of primer, Sand that down with 220 grit sandpaper. Then we'll apply two coats of a finished coat of paint of the customer's choosing. In our next video, we'll go through the process of installing the grill work, as well as the foiled back insulation in the back of the radiator covers. We appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, please add them below.